Welcome back. All right, so uh, more news of the day because there's there's more information that's come to light about the Rangers situation. So throw together another news board and we'll discuss it. And we'll discuss the Senators with a pretty good signing. Pretty smart. Smart move by the Senator. Um, so two games suspension for Gostas Bear starts things out. Uh, two games for the 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 check into the boards after the goal on Friedman. Uh, and there, there you go. Goss to spare two games. That's, that's it. All I've got is just a shrug and a, yeah, there you go. That's, that, I, I wish there was more I could add, but there just, there just isn't. I'm, I'm incredulous at, at just this, I, yeah, anyways. <clears throat> so let me know what you guys think about that decision in the comment section below, as I know people will. All right, Senators, uh, one year, $900,000 extension for Forsberg. I love this deal. Forsberg comes in, uh, he's been through waivers and waivers and waivers, and he's bounced around from team to team to team. And I, I felt bad for him wearing his his Jets pads. Well, the blue. I mean, I didn't, did he even play for the Jets? So, with his blue pads, wearing, you know, black Sens jersey or white Sens jersey, and I felt bad for him because he's kind of bounced around. And here he is with a $900,000 contract for next year. It also means that for expansion requirements, Ottawa's got him signed. Smart move. And I can't see him being the pick from the Ottawa Senators. And and I think he's got a decent shot at at least, at least being a guy that they call up here and there next season. So uh, nice to see Forsberg stick with it. Uh, Dadnov is out. He's day-to-day. -day. And, of course, with how late we are in the season, a lot of these day-to-days are just going to mean their season is done, which is the case for both Josh Brown, who has a broken foot, as well as uh, Shabbat would appear to be done for the season for Ottawa as well. So um, it's it's the off-season for some of these guys. It's a shorter off-season than it normally would be for missing the playoffs, only from May to October. So it is shorter than normal. Uh, hopefully everybody's back and healthy and good to go for training camp uh, when that rolls around in September. So yeah, for Ottawa, again, I, I think some solid moves being made here. And they have to kind of be looking around today and going, wow, there's a tire fire and it's not us. Hasn't been us all year. It's been Vancouver. It's been the, been the Rangers. Sometimes it's been Buffalo. It really hasn't been us. It's got to feel nice, doesn't it? Uh, Freddie Anderson. Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, he's sent to the AHL on a conditioning stint. He's going to get some work down there, meaning he is on the verge of a return to the Toronto lineup, which we knew he would be making anyways before the end of the season. That was the timeline for him. So he'll be coming back into the lineup. That means you'll have Anderson, you'll have Campbell, and Toronto, I would think whoever the better of the two goaltenders is entering the postseason, that's who the starter is going to be in the postseason. I, I think that job's there for Campbell if he outperforms Anderson. So, yeah, uh, hopefully Freddie's 100%. Good to go. Um, there was, of course, news yesterday. I'm going to do a video specifically on this, but I want to mention it here. The Vancouver Canucks have made it official that they're moving their team from Utica, their American Hockey League team, from Utica to Abbotsford. Lovely Abbotsford here, meaning I'll be technically within walking distance, but technically Miami's within walking distance of here. You just have to have enough time. So, um... Abbotsford, uh, I think, will will be uh, warm to this. Last time out, Abbotsford had the heat. The problem with that was it was Calgary Flames prospects. Okay, Calgary's not an overly popular team in in the the area of of the Vancouver Canucks. So, yeah, I think that was part of the problem, and I, I think there was also issues at the time with. I mean, the Chilliwack Bruins didn't last either. It was just, it was not a good time for hockey locally, and I think it'll work. I think with the, the Vancouver Giants, the Abbotsford, um, whatever they call themselves, and I'm 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 leaning on uh, whatever whatever name people want to use is fine with me. I don't really care. I, I think I think junior Canucks could work. I think uh, yeah, something along those lines. Uh, whatever it is, I'm happy that it's gonna happen. And Utica, of course, remember it's not that long ago we heard that Utica had uh, tried to trademark Utica Devils. So it's quite possible we'll see the Devils bringing their farm team back to Utica. Utica should be okay. It has proven itself to be a hockey market capable of, of supporting the AHL. And so tomorrow I'll look at the, the, the relationship the Canucks have had with Utica. The first thing I did last night was look on the AHL store. They do have 
Um, they had a, a white CCM Utica, Utica jersey in small um, on sale. So I grabbed that because I have a blue Utica jersey and a green one. And so I'm going to do a video where I talk about the Utica relationship with the Canucks and how it's been beneficial in some ways. I think it's been wrongfully maligned at other times. I, I think there's there's issues with the Canucks development system in general. I think moving the team to Abbotsford will help, but I don't think they've been hindered too much by having their team in Utica. Um, so it's been announced that, yes, Drury's going to take over as both GM and president. Man, good luck. So it, it would appear that I may have to do a video on James Dolan. Because James Dolan is the one that's been driving this whole thing. And he does not feel that the Rangers have made enough of a step forward this year. Which has thrown a lot of people off, myself included. I think the Rangers have had very good improvement this year. When you look at the fact that Lundqvist leaves. When you look at the fact that they've got so many young players in their lineup. And, and you look at uh, the slow start for Zibanejad after he had COVID. And it was clear that it was having lingering effects on him. And once he got better, his numbers have been fantastic. Really, the Rangers, their future looks extremely bright. So to hear that the owner decided he's had enough is kind of a surprise. And that apparently it wasn't related to the Wilson thing. Although, although one of the rumors that's out there is that he was upset with how the team responded to what Wilson did. That he felt there should have been more of a fight back from, from the Rangers. And that the tweet that we were talking about earlier and we've been talking about from yesterday was actually from him. That it came directly from ownership and that the GM and team president weren't on board with that. That was not something they were on board with at all. So for the New York Rangers, clearly there's a, a discussion to be had. And it might be about James Dolan, who's well known in New York. And yeah, that could be an interesting video. Because it's not just a hockey video, right? Uh, so Detroit, Bobby Ryan. Bobby Ryan wants to return to the Detroit Red Wings next season. I, I would think they can figure things out. It's not like it's going to cost them a ton of money. They've got cap space. They're still a building team. And I think Ryan's been a decent option for them. Uh, Robbie Fabry, his season's done. Not necessarily a huge surprise there that he won't be coming back for the final few games. But his season is apparently officially done. Uh, on the uh, Winnipeg front. I almost said Washington. Winnipeg front. Not to Washington yet. Winnipeg front. Uh, Ville Hainola is going to play tonight. This is his first game since uh, the middle of April. So uh, I, I like Hainola. I think he can be a, a really good solid top four option for the Winnipeg Jets. So yeah, hopefully he can get things going. The Jets with a really poor uh, a, a effort lately. At the very least, poor results. And seven losses in a row is, uh, well, it's not great. That's not what they were looking for uh, at any point this season. And hopefully they can turn things around. Uh, Alex Newhook in his debut tonight with the Colorado Avalanche. He will have every opportunity to succeed. He's on a line with Kadri and Burakovsky. Keep in mind that's with an asterisk that these lines can be subject to change and quickly. So Newhook will make his debut. Jacob McDonald's returning as well. So it's Colorado meaning when you get a return and you get a debut, somebody's going to get hurt because that's how things work for Colorado. But uh, yeah, we'll see. And then out of Washington, there's a developing story as well. So Samsonov and, and Kuznetsov were out for disciplinary reasons the other night. They're not going to be in the lineup tonight. Kuznetsov's now back on the protocol list, the COVID protocol list. Remember, he was on it for a while at the start of the season. and Well, near the start of the season. And the NHL uh, decided we shut down other teams. We're not shutting down the Capitals in this situation as kind of a, a punishment. I, I, there's there's some feeling that maybe Kuznetsov's time in Washington's coming to an end, that he could be he could be on his way out. And what it reminds me of is when when Radulov was on his way out of I want to say Nashville. Remember with Nashville and they had him out, and it just it feels like that that maybe Kuznetsov they're saying we'll just go ahead and 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 move on. But Samsonov, while he's not on the list, they're saying he's not in he's not going to be out there either, meaning. There could still be disciplinary stuff going on. And we don't know exactly what it is. We uh, Apparently it's like late for a team meeting, this kind of thing. But it definitely sounds like there's a pattern of behavior that the Capitals aren't necessarily happy with. We'll see where that goes. And when, when it goes there, I'll be here to report on it. All right. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, the whole Rangers thing is just absolutely, I, I, don't, I don't get it. And it sounds to me like the, the Rangers have an owner that's just decided, all right. Let's just change everything up. I'm not happy with the job being done here. 
I don't know if he expected playoffs. Did did nobody sit down and explain to him how tough this division was they were in this year? Like, did seriously? Um, yeah, it's it's remarkable. Mentioned uh, in the preview this morning, their their goal differential is a positive twenty five. I'm not sure what more they could have done. After that slow start, it's very difficult to recover. But they did everything they could to recover. All right, I'll be here to report on the the next installment of whatever happens with the Rangers and like I said I think I have to do a, a video on their owner because I think that may be an ongoing thing and again wearing the Sens jersey uh, maybe Melnick feels a little bit taller today I'm like yeah yeah see see I may say the god goofy thing every now and then and it might be in the news but there you go he's he's doing his thing all right let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video and enjoy the hockey tonight. I'll talk to you guys again soon.